I'm joined by political analyst Harold Parkendorf and in from our Cape Town studios by John Smythe, who's the executive director of the Justice Alliance of South Africa. Um, Harold, I'll start with you. And John, uh, listen in. It's the same question I'm going to pose to you. The question this morning is not whether Justice Andile Ngobo should have stayed in office or whether he should have went. It's about whether the president should have had a hand in his staying or going. Yes and no. Uh, I, uh, eventually, the, pr the president does appoint the chief justice. It's the process that went wrong. There's a dispute over the constitutionality and the, the way it was done, actually. John? Yes, I would like to say that, you know, I, I don't think that we should talk about uh, legal storms and payoffs here. I think the important thing is that constitutional democracy has triumphed. And that's something that every uh, South African citizen should be proud of. Uh, in the Constitutional Court, uh, Monday before last, we saw uh, an array of talent of lawyers and the ten justices seeking the right solution in terms of the Constitution and in terms of the rule of law. I was there all day and I was immensely encouraged. Again on Tuesday in Parliament, Parliament, uh, the Portfolio Committee on Justice and Constitutional Development, <laughs> were doing the same thing. And the process has played out. And the point has been reached where the Chief Justice realized that really there was no way he could stay in office except by a constitutional amendment. And that, of course, could not possibly be put through in the time we have available. Or, and or so all credit to him for accepting that and standing down. But there are no winners or losers. Uh, this is a case of the process of constitutional democracy triumphing. And I'm, for one, I'm very proud of that and pleased about it. Harold, you're shaking your head. Well, it certainly is constitutional democracy triumphing, but there is egg on Mr. Zuma's face because he was warned at the end of last year that the way he wants to appoint, to extend the Chief Justice's uh, uh, tenure uh, is unconstitutional and, some, and it was suggested what should be done. And in the usual way, the government just dithered and dithered to the last minute and then tried to change, tried to put an act through Parliament. Uh, and there simply wasn't enough time. The fact that the Chief Justice stood back is certainly a great thing to do. I mean, he in a, was in a difficult position because of political dithering. And he, in, in the end, it meant that he would have to become Chief Justice if his fellow justices decide that he could. That's the short. Uh, yeah, well, one of the things the analysts are saying this morning that had he stayed, he would forever have been tainted. What everyone is unanimous about, both government and opposition parties, is that, is, is that this is a huge loss to the legal fraternity, uh, you know, a mind as, 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 as illuminated as uh, Justice and Lobos. Yes, um, I don't think we should overplay that. He, 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 was, uh, he was in charge of uh, reform of the, of the judiciary, uh, but that'll, that'll, that'll obviously continue. Um, what is changing after a long battle is that the administration of the, of the courts will now sit with what is to be called the office of the Chief Justice and no longer the Department of Justice, and that's very important. But the next Chief Justice can also drive the same process. Uh, John, there are lessons here for both uh, Justice Minister Jeff Khadebe and for the President, are there not? Yes, yes there are. I, I, I think obviously it's, it's possible to criticise in the way that Harold does, uh, but um, this has not been an easy matter, and I think it's quite right that the Constitutional Court should have considered it. Uh, I, I think we should be slow to make charges of uh, the President and, and the Minister and the Chief Justice being hasty. The highest I would put it is that perhaps the Chief Justice, as a, a distinguished lawyer as he is, uh, should have said to President Zuma when he was first asked to stay on, well, Mr. President, uh, I'm concerned about this. I would like to stay on, uh, but does the Constitution permit me to stay on? Well, we don't know whether he did that, but we suspect he didn't because there was some correspondence uh, uh, produced in the Constitutional Court, which showed, in fact, that the Chief Justice uh, explained to the President why he had particular qualifications for staying on. So that's the highest I would put any criticism of the Chief Justice. He's a very distinguished judge, as, as Harold has said, and uh, uh, again, I think we need to recognize that nobody is indispensable, and by stepping down, he has recognized that. Right, and if one had been in the Constitutional Court 10 days ago, one would have seen the caliber of other judges who can step, step into his shoes. And I don't think we need have any fears about a successor who will carry on the good work.
A final question to both you gentlemen. I mean, uh, Mac Maharaj, who is the president's spokesperson, says um, that there's no, the, there's no reason now for the matter before the Constitutional Court to, to, to continue. The point is a ruling is um, expected in about a week's time. What needs to happen insofar as that process uh, is concerned? Well, certainly we must wait what the Constitutional Court says to, to clear up the matter, and then, if necessary, the Constitution must be changed. But let me add one last thought. This is not the first time that we've had a problem ab about legislation not... Uh, possibly not being constitutional. And I think it's time that we look at the office of its chief uh, law advisor to the government, because clearly that's where the problem began. Mm. It, was a, it was a lack of proper advice now in hindsight. Exactly. John, what do you say um, to the constitutional court process going full circle? It, I, think it, I think it's essential that we should have the judgment, and I'm sure we will. I mean, there will be uh, pr principles and precedents in that judgment which are of utmost importance, and particularly, of course, if Parliament decides to proceed with any amendments uh, to the Constitution or indeed to, to, to the other legislation. So I'm sure we, shall, we will have a full judgment from the Constitutional Court, and, and that's very important, and that's one of the, 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 the pluses, the very important pluses of the outcome of this whole saga. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time this morning. John Smythe from the Justice Alliance uh, joining us uh, in, from our Cape Town studios and uh, political analyst Harold Parkendorf here with me in Johannesburg.